Hi students, welcome to exercise 40, the fundamental counting principle and factorial notation. Alright, so if we were to arrange six people in a row, how many different ways could we, could we do this? Well, in the first spot, you could have six people. And in the second spot, since you've already used one person, you would have five. And that would continue, right? Because in the third spot, you would have already had used two people, so there's four people available, three, two, and one. And you would multiply all those together, so six options, five, four, three, two, one, to a total of 720 ways to do this. Well, we can rewrite this as six times five times four times three times one, and also six factorial. Okay, so this is actually the actual representation of six factorial. Um, so six with an ex uh, exclamation mark is basically six times five, four, three, two, one. So it's basically six up until one. Uh, so for example, seven factorial would simply be seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So basically it's just going straight to one, right? So you'd have seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay, and notice that it would just be seven times this number. And seven times this number is 5,040. Okay, and four factorial, well, that would be just simply four times three times two times one, and that is 24. Okay, so we, we define factorial notation um, as if n is a positive whole number, okay, so n has to be positive and it has to be a whole number, so it can't be like 1.5 or something like that. So n factorial is n, so it'll be the largest number, so 7 factorial is 7, times n minus 1, so 1 less than 7, so 6, n minus 2, 2 less than 7, so 5, and you go all the way to 3, 2, and 1. Okay? Uh, as a definition, we define 0 factorial as 1. So this is by definition, 0 factorial is 1. All right, evaluate the following expressions. So 9 factorial divided by 7 factorial. Well, notice that 9 factorial is like saying 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Okay? Because if you think about it, 9 times 8, which would be 9, 8, and then 7 factorial would be 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this would just be the remainder of all the numbers together. And I stopped at 7 factorial because I have a 7 factorial down here. So I can say those two cancel out, and all I have left is 9 times 8, which is 72. All right, the next one, again, we have 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial divided by 5 factorial, 3 factorial. I, the reason I stopped at 5 factorial is because I can get rid of this larger factorial on the denominator. And what we're left with is... 8 times 7 times 6, and I'm going to expand the 3, okay, because 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, and notice that 3 times 2 times 1, well, that's just 6. So you can get rid of those, and all I'm left with is 8 times 7, which is 56. All right, next example, I want to prove an identity. So I want to prove that 5 factorial plus 4 factorial is equal to 6 times 4 factorial. If you guys remember an identity, I'm going to work with one side. So probably I'm going to work with this side and try to turn this into one term. Because 6 times 4 factorial, that's one term. So I'm going to bring those two terms together. So let's working with the left-hand side. Well, to start this, I'm going to change the 5 factorial to 4 times, sorry, 5 times 4 factorial plus 4 factorial. The reason I've done that is now I can say that this is a common term. So I can factor out 4 factorial. So if I factor out 4 factorial, what do I have left? Well, in here I have a left of 5, and in here I have left 1. So what you have is 6 fa factorial times 6, which notice is the exact same thing on the other side. So equals to the right hand side. All right. Completely simplify the following expressions. Uh, I'm not sure what happened here. We only need this once. So let's uh, scratch off the smaller one here. Okay, so this is the same thing as the factorial notation, except instead of working with integers, I'm working with variables. Okay, so same idea. Nothing's too different. So I'm going to expand n factorial up until I can cancel out the n minus 2. Okay, well, n factorial would be n times n minus 1 times 
n minus 2. And I'm going to stop there. So I'm going to say factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial. Okay, so again, you start with the largest number. Imagine this is 10. So imagining their numbers usually helps a little bit. So imagine this is 10. So 10, this 10 minus 1 is 9. 10 minus 2 is 8. And this would be 8 factorial. So those two can cancel out. So what I have left is n times n minus 1. All right, so same thing here. Okay, so whenever you're expanding uh, factorials, you're always going to expand the larger factorial because the larger one is going to eventually simplify to the smaller one. So, for example, this is 10 and this was 8. So I'm going to fact I'm going to simplify that one. In our case here, n plus 1 is larger than n. So it's the n plus 1 that I'm going to expand. So the n factorial is going to stay up top. On the bottom, I'm going to have n plus 1. Okay? And the following number, it's 1 less than that. So the next number would simply be n, so n factorial. So again, I'm going to stop there because I can now cancel the n factorial in both top and bottom. And what I have left is 1 over n plus 1. All right, solve the following equation. Okay, So this is just factorials and inside of an equation. So this fraction gives us 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to expand the larger one of the two. So again, if you're not sure, plug in a number. I like using 10. So 10 would give this 7, and 10 would give this 5. So this is your larger number, because imagine n is, again, 10. This will subtract less from the original than that one. So I'm going to expand n minus 3. So the n minus 3 is the first number. The next number would be 1 less than that, so n minus 4. And then one less than that again, n minus 5. I'm going to stop there because that is now the same term as the denominator. So in the denominator, you have n minus 5. And OK, all that's equal to 2. OK, so now I can cancel out this n minus 5 factorial because they're the same top and bottom. And what we have left is n minus 3 times n minus 4. And that's equal to 2. OK, I'm going to expand this. So n squared minus 7n plus 12 equal to 2. Bring the 2 over. Okay, and all I have left is to factor and to solve for n. So I believe this is n minus 2, n minus 5 equals 0. So I have n equals 2 as one option and n equals 5 as one option. Okay, so now I have to look back into my original equation. Notice that n minus 2, sorry, no, n equals 2 gives us a negative 1 here, it gives us a negative 3 there. Well, you can have a negative factorial, okay? And by definition, the factorial must be a positive integer. Therefore, n equals 2 is not accepted because, again, it would give us a negative value here. n equals 5, that would be okay, right? You'd have 5 minus 3, which is 2 factorial. And here you have 5 minus 5, which is 0 factorial. And if you remember on the first page, 0 factorial is defined as 1. So you'd have 2 over 1, which is obviously 2. All right, so how is the factorial notation associated to the fundamental counting principle? All right, well, let's see if we can choose three style of shirt in four different colors. How many choices do we have for shirts? Okay, well, let's say we had uh, our three different styles of shirts, right? And then those three different styles will offer four choices of colors each. So just by looking at this diagram, you could probably tell that there are 12 possible choices. The math we would have to do is you'd be 3 times 4, which gives you 12, right? So you'd have one for the style, and then the second option would be color. All right, so makes makes somewhat sense, I hope. Note we multiply the options to get our total. Multiply, multiply. Okay, so now what happens if we have digits? So let's say we had three-digit numbers. How many three-digit numbers can you make with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Well, if repetition is allowed, your first position, you could have any five numbers, correct? Well, since repetition is allowed, you could repeat any of those numbers. So you'd have five options for the second one. And for your third option, well, you would have any five options again, which would make a total of 125 different possible three-digit numbers. Okay, so now what if repetition is not allowed? Okay, well, what you're going to have to do now is say, well, I'm going to give a restriction for the second position. Because on the first position, you can have any of the 1 to 5, correct? Any number can start this. However, for the second position now, you cannot have the number you've just used. 
so you would only have four options. And the third digit, you would only have three options because you would already have used two. So now you only have 60 possible options if we cannot repeat the digits. Okay, so now let's add an extra uh, layer to this. What if this number must be even? Okay, well, if this has to be an even number, you know you have to finish with either a 2 or a 4. Okay, so that's what we're going to start with here. So these are our three digits. This last digit must be a 2 or a 4, which means there are only two possible options for our last digit. Okay, so for our first digit, now, now we've uh, established the first digit, the last digit, sorry. The first digit, well, this can be anything except for the number we used here. So you can have any four options for that first number since we've already used one uh, on the last position. Okay, so you use one of them here, you use another number here. Now for the middle digit, you'd have only three numbers left over. So you'd have three. And therefore, 12 times two, we'd have 24 different options. Okay, and when you do questions like this, it's always easier and like that, same thing. It's easier and recommended to start with the restrictions. So there is restriction because it has to be an even number. I will start by placing my numbers here and then moving from beginning to end. All right, guys, good luck on the lesson.